What's up? Hashem. Let's get started. Today's Amud in Masechet Shabbat is Zion Amud Bet, 7b. We're going to start at the two dots, about 10 lines from the top of the page on Zion Amud Bet. Gufa. Gufa Amrav Gidla Marav. Amrav Chia. Okay, so today we're going to discuss an idea which is called Chorei Rishut Tarabim or Chorei Rishut Tayachid. Chor, chor is a whole, you know. And this is going to, really, it's one section today that we're going to talk about. Um, very interesting discussion today. It's also these imaginary halachot we'll get to. Okay, listen to the case. We had this case yesterday, and I said we'll develop it more today, because we're going to talk more about it today. Uh, let's imagine, you give a good example yesterday. Remember we spoke about this case where you have a... <coughs> Bless you. Where you have a very short house. <coughs> Bless you. Yeah, the dog house. Like the dog house. That was the example you gave because that seems to be a good description, actually. Wow. It's funny because we talk about carrying inside of it, which you're not allowed because it's like Carmelite. You can't really move much inside of it. I just want to point that out. When you have to like, try to be realistic about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a house that's nine tfachim inside. It's very short. So we're talking about carrying inside. It's very small. It's just... It's a little bit bedochak, I'm just saying the whole thing. But anyways, okay, like a doghouse. So we said the case was yesterday, where from the floor till the roof, below ad bichlal, not including the roof, is nine tfachim. On top of the roof, because the roof is one tefach, is ten tfachim, so it's above ten tfachim. Okay, so we said a psak yesterday, we'll see, we're going to quote today and discuss this, that the halacha is inside is treated like a carmelite, because it's not ten tfachim tall. And you can't carry four tvachim in that, a four amot in that area, because it has chomer, it's the chumrah b'shut On top of it is reshut hayachid. So you could carry on the entire roof. That was what we said. Again, like we're pointing out is it is a bit of a minimal area, but you could technically carry on top of it because you have four by four tvachim and there's walls, which we look, olim ad rakia. we look at the walls as if they go up and therefore it's reshut hayachid on top. Okay, that's the case over here. Now listen to this. Listen to the twist. Somebody goes ahead and he says, you know, I want to carry inside of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a shovel and I'm going to dig in the ground of the inside, one tefach down. Now he doesn't dig the whole ground out, he just digs in the center. You hear, you hear the case? Yeah. In the center, he digs uh, an area. He digs some sort of an area. Say uh, four by four tvachim, he digs an area inside. Okay? He digs such an area. So now the question is like this From where he dug till the roof is now ten tvachim. Mm-hmm. So that could be Rashut Tayachid, beautiful. But the question is what about the surrounding area? Because the area outside of the hole, inside of the doghouse, just as the example, is not 10 tfachim from the roof. That's 9 tfachim from the roof. But the area that he dug out, which is in the center, let's say, is 10 tfachim from the roof. So inside that whole said that you can carry because that's 10 tfachim now, it's a Rishut Tayachid. But what about the surrounding area? You understand the shaila we have over here? It's a very, very interesting shaila. The inside is now 10 tfachim from the roof, but the sides of the hole are not. So the, chidush, one unit. so the chidush we're going to say is you are allowed to carry in the surrounding area too and the reason you're allowed to is because that's considered essentially connected like chorei reshut tayachid. Now chorei reshut tayachid means if you have a reshut tayachid and there's walls around it and there's holes in the walls. Okay? Those wa- holes, they don't have the area to be really considered Rishut Tayachid because the holes are not 4 by 4 Tvachim. However, since they're considered connected to the Rishut Tayachid, they take on the same status as the Rishut Tayachid. So to put something inside of those holes wouldn't be an issue. That's not a Carmelite or some other issue. That would be considered part of the Rishut Tayachid as well. And we view the sides of the hole in this case as like the corners or the holes of a Rishut Tayachid, which is the hole that you dug out. That's the chidush that we're going to because say today. Because of the today. walls? Because of, similar to the case of the walls that I just described. Yeah. They're really attached to the yeah. shoot that you just made by digging the hole. Mm-hmm. So they, chalak mizay, they're mm-hmm. part of it. So you're not saying it's a karmelid, it's a shoot 
Lo the whole become Rishut Echid. And you're not to care them. So We're just going to bring a proof. That's going to be Chorei Rishut Echid. It's going to be a proof. Let's see. That's the Chidush. Let's see. Gufa. Says the Gemara, we quoted this yesterday. Gufa means literally the body of the text. Whenever we say Gufa, it means we said this before, now let's talk about it. That's what the Gufa means. So Gufa, we quoted before, Amar Gidl, Amar Avchia, Bar Yosef, Amar Rav. So in the name of Rav, it was said, Yud, if you have a house that is not ten tvachim of airspace in the house, the Kiryoma Shlimole Yud, and the roof is one tefach, so it makes it ten. Al Gago Motar Letartel Vekulos, this was the Psak. On top of the roof, which is ten tvachim tall, and it's four by four tvachim, so you can carry the entirety of it. But inside of it, in in bo amot, you can only carry within dalit amot because more than that, it's a carmelite. You're not allowed to carry the seder. That's how we explain. Amar Abaye comes. Abaye he says ve'im chakak bo dalit al dalit. He took his shovel. He went into the doghouse. That's a difficult thing to do. I want to point out. It's not so easy to dig inside of there because it's sort of cramped. But he went in, he dug out a space inside in this center place, four by four tvachim. So now you have a reshut hayachid from that hole to the roof. And now you have ten tvachim. Mutar letaltel bekulo. This is the key. You're allowed to carry in the whole area inside, not just the place that he dug out, but even the area next to it, because we view that area outside of the hole as an extension of the hole itself. That's the chidush. Okay. My timer. What's the reason? So Gemara answers like I was telling you. Have a hayachid, because this is the same as holes in a wall of reshut hayachid. Because the walls of Rishut Hayachid are like the Rishut Hayachid. So therefore, what are we saying here? Let me just describe this clearly. If you have a Rishut Hayachid, you have a closed-in private area, and there's walls of this closed-in private area, and those walls have holes in them. Now the holes are not 4 by 4 Tvachim, so you say, oh, it's not a Rishut Hayachid. But the answer is, since it's connected to a Rishut Tayachid, those holes are also considered a Rishut Tayachid. So says the Gemara, says Abaye, therefore it's the same thing here. Even though it's only in the center, that it's ten Tvachim to the roof, since the outside is considered an extension, it's considered the corners of a Rishut Tayachid, it's also treated like Rishut Tayachid. <laughs> Exactly, nitpal means secondary or connected. Lama to nitpal elav. Exactly. We use it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lama yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. piko. Uh, Gam ba'alacha ikav v'tafel in, in barchot. Exactly, it's the same word. Secondary or connected to. Lama exactly. Lama to nitpal el reshut hachafira. Right, dependent. Exactly, exactly. Akir, uh, That's the chidush. Ah, ze achor shu chafar. Achshav ze nikvar ani asarat fachim. Aval ma'im ze ze chelak me me meluna. אז אומרים שזה הקירות של הרשות היחיד, אז זה נטפל על הרשות היחיד, mm-hmm. אז מותר לך לטלטל גם פה. אקזקטי. זה נגר קירות פה. אז זה כאילו, כאילו, כאילו קירות של... Let's say the dog yes, house, yes, yes, there is still walls. Yeah, yeah. So this is the main wall, and this is the secondary walls? No, no, not walls. No, no, no. It's not, not to do with walls. מה אתה אומר? No. The way, we look at it, the way we look at it is, is that in the center you understand it's רשות היחיד, because it's 10 תבחים. Yes. The way we look at it is the sides of that it's an extension of the Rashut Hayachid. It's connected. The sides of it, where there's more, the dirt is a little higher. I mean, that's the way you could look at it. That's also part of Rashut Hayachid. Where do we find this example? That's what Abai is showing us. We find the same example if you have a Rashut Hayachid and there's walls. And there's holes in those walls. There's some sort of holes. It's interesting, this idea of putting things in holes, we don't really think so much about it, but the Gemara talks about this. Very interesting. At the end of Masechet Brachot, the Gemara talks about how if somebody has to go to the bathroom, they used to wear tefillin all day. So if they have to go to the bathroom, one of the options the Gemara gives is you could put it in the chorei hakotel. In the holes. Shelves. It was like shelves. Yeah, but it, yeah, you could put it in the holes of the wall. We don't really think about this so much today, but the idea, that just that's the idea, is that the holes of the wall of a Rishut Hayachid is the same as Rishut Hayachid, even though it's not four by four tefachim. Does it doesn't have the status of... Like makom patu. No, no, it's not. It's Rishut Hayachid. It's considered Rishut Hayachid. So what the Gemara is saying is, you see, when it's a connection to the main Rishut Hayachid, it's also like Rishut Hayachid. So also here, in this case too, even though the surrounding the whole, it's not Tent Fachim, 
it's like tafel, it's secondary to the whole, and therefore that's also Rishut Tayachid as well. Chidush. Beautiful. Now let's continue. Now what we're going to talk about is Chorei Rishut HaRabim, because this is going to be a machloket. Imagine the same scenario, but now you're in the Rishut HaRabim. So you have the public area, and then surrounding the public area, there's these thick walls. So the walls are, let's say, four tvachim wide, and uh, it could be ten tvachim taller, tw- much more than that probably. They're very tall walls, let's say. So now, the holes that are in the Rishut HaRabim, in the walls of the Rishut HaRabim, there's a machloket, we look at those holes as Rishut HaRabim as well, or is it not considered Rishut HaRabim? This is going to be a machloket, actually. So let's see this inside. Says the Gemara, that's regarding holes of the Rishut HaYachid. Rav says, Abayah says, clearly everybody agrees about that. Fine. But now says the Gemara, Chore, Chore Rishut HaRabim, regarding holes in the wall of Rishut HaRabim. Abaye Omer, Kirshut HaRabim Damu. So Abaye says, it's treated like Rishut HaRabim. It's the same as Rishut HaRabim. Rav Omer, Rav says, Lav Kirshut HaRabim Damu. It's not Rishut HaRabim. So now if it's not Rishut HaRabim, let's just speak this out. What would it be? So now it depends how big it is. If it's four by four tfachim, it would be considered Carmelit. If it's less than four by four tfachim, these holes, so then it would be considered Makom Pato. So we have a machloket regarding the holes in the wall of Rishut HaRabim. Abaye says, that's like Rishut HaRabim. He says, it's the same. If the holes in the wall of Rishut HaYachid is Rishut HaYachid, holes in the wall of Rishut HaRabim is Rishut HaRabim. Rav says, no. That is not considered part of the Rishut Tarabim, and now it would depend. Either it's Carmelit or it's Makom Petur. If it's 4 by 4 Tvachim, it would be Carmelit. If it's less than 4 by 4 Tvachim, it's going to be Makom Petur. But we didn't speak about Makom Petur. We spoke about something that is in the size of 4 by 4. It's up to 10 Tvachim. Makom Petur is where it's less than 4 by 4. Right. Right. So that's what I'm saying. According to Rava, it's not Rishut Tarabim, rather, it's either Carmelit or Makom Petur. Why it change it? Before they tell me when it was a shoot ayachid, right, why, right. why it's all the same things, right? Why you change right, it? Right. That's all a chidush. You tell me who before that, right. if there was... But if you're going to turn, to turn a shoot ayachid, if you're going to dig a hole. No, it's a shoot ayachid now. No, no, excellent, about the excellent. Right. If it's in the shoot ayachid, and this is like uh, surrounded by walls, mm-hmm. right? And there is like four by four, and up to ten fucking high. And you dig inside, it's turned to a shoot ayachid also. That's the that's question. So, the Pashtut, we could say, simple Pshat, when it's in Rishut Tayachid, it's a function of the Rishut Tayachid. That's why it's there, like you said, for shelves. But in Rishut Tarabim, it's less of a natural function. It's less of a natural use for the public. So it has a status of Rishut Latzmo. Then it would depend, is it Carmelit or is it Makom Petur? But it has a, it, it's not as readily available or usable for the Rabim, like in a Rashut Tayachid, it would be for the owner of that property. So therefore, Rav, Rav is going to argue and say, that's not considered a Rashut Tarabim. Abayah says, look, it's the same. Where is it attached to? It's considered part of, and therefore it's Rashut Tarabim. Rav says, no. Because in Rashut Tayachid, you really, a person used it. Like you said, the shelves. Hole, the shelves, you know, to hide stuff. But exactly. once it's going to turn to over 10 Tfachim height, yeah. And they're surrounded by water. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's hold off on the tent Tvachim, but let, let's go get to that now in a minute. So let's see. Amadei Rav Ala Abayi. Rav turns to Abayi and he challenges Abayi. He says like this, wait a second. Ledidach, according to you, the Amrit that you're saying, Chore Rishut Tarabim Kishut Tarabim Damu. Okay, good. According to Abayi, you're saying if there's holes in Rishut Tarabim, it's considered Kishut Tarabim. You have to just try to use your imagination on this because we're going to get to a case soon. Imagine you've got a hole in the wall. It's a funny thing because we don't really relate to this so much. We're going to have this today. This is the, all this area is Rishut Tarabim and there's a hole in the wall. Hole in the wall. So this area is either like Abayah says Rishut Tarabim. Rava says it's, it's Makom Laatzmo. Either Carmelit or Makom Petor as we explained. Fine. No, we, we can think about the Chomot of Yerushalayim. Chomot Yerushalayim, that's a good example. The stone walls. Beautiful, good example. So the walls are thick. It's amazing how yeah. many times Yerushalayim is feeding so much for the... Well, it makes sense. Because the Mishnayot, where were they written? Yeah, 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 it makes sense. The discussions. They discuss Davar Sheba Ove. They discuss the classic cases. It makes sense. So says Rav Tabai, he says like this, I have a problem with your Shita. Amadei Rav Labai Ledidach Ta'amit Chorei Shutabim Kishutabim Damu. 
according to your opinion that the wall, the holes in the wall of Rishut Ta'abim is like Rishut Ta'abim. So, Maishna Meha, what is the difference from what we t- spoke about yesterday? Yesterday, remember, we had in the Brayta, remember the Brayta we had, it said the four Rishuyot, and one of them was Carmelit. Remember it said, so it said examples of Carmelit. It said, Yam, Bik'ah, and then it said, Ve'a Carmelit. All the eyes was right. so said, Mazek Carmelit. So, we explained yesterday, the case is where there's the, this is a very interesting question. We have two ways Rashi explained it, but let's just go with a simple shot. is that, it's not in the normal path of the rabbi. You have to go around to It's like the over. shoulder. Remember we said? Yes, yes. So that's va Carmelite. That was like the main example of Carmelite. This one? Yeah. And this one. Exactly. Two and ways Rashi explained it. The nobody walks there. But says Rava Tabai, wait a second. This kasha is going to be, let's read it inside. See the kasha. It's like this. The chiata of Demi Amar Rabbi Yochanan, lo nitzricha, that that example of our Carmelite is to teach us. El lekaren zavit as muchal reshut We learned that yesterday. Yeah, that they explained. Rabbi Yochanan explained the, the primary example of Carmelite is where you have essentially a shoulder, an area that's not in the normal walking of the reshut but it's next to the reshut mm-hmm. And that's a Carmelite. Mm-hmm. The problem is, says Rav to Abai, I don't understand. V'tehave kechore reshut harabim. L'shitatcha, if you have an area that's next to the reshut harabim, like a hole in the wall, that's considered reshut harabim. So why is that area, the shoulder of the it's road, different, hold different. on, hold on, why is that area not considered reshut harabim? Why is that a karmelit? You can say different because What's this, the difference? Oh, the, the perfect example. You're the kash, you're the kash on Abai? That's yeah, Rav's kash on Abai. We spoke also about the reshut harabim. Oh, what's that? It's a, it's a, we'll see, we'll see. That's a different example. It's a similar idea. Why would that be Carmelit? That should be considered Rishut Tabi. Because, because you can say, but the primary example of Carmelit that we saw yesterday, the this and that, right. it's really, people use it. Right. It's been used. Even it's, if, even it's not the best way because people have to go, but it's been used. That one, not necessarily people use these things of the Rishut Tabi. You're saying the opposite. You have to say the opposite well, because Abai is saying the holes is Rishut Tarabim and that area is not Rishut Tarabim. That yes. area is Carmelite. Yes. So the Kasha is, according to you, that you say the holes in the walls are Rishut Tarabim. So why is that area on the side not Rishut Tarabim? Why is that Carmelite? That's, that's Rav's Kasha to Abai. You understand that better challenge over here? The example. Oh, okay. You hear the kasha? Okay. You flip back to the picture no, no, if you yeah, want, I but that's, that's the, if the hole in the wall, because it's used by the public, is Rishut Tarabim, so the side area that's near the houses, like we spoke about yesterday, should also be considered Rishut Tarabim. Why is that considered Carmelit? It's the kasha. Ah, but also mm-hmm. remember that that touches to Rishut Tarabim. This, this is between Rishut and Rishut Tarabim. Oh, oh, okay. I hear that. What, I hear what is saying, the height of the wall? You know? What's that? What is the height of the wall? We'll get to the height in a minute. But let, let's assume it's ten, It's within 10 Tvachim. At this point, let's just assume yeah. it. Okay. Let's assume. I mean, it's but if it's attached question. to the wall, if it's attached to the wall, and is it surrounded by walls? Matomer. Is it next to the... The wall is basically which, ex, the which, which case are you asking? Yeah. We say that according to a, 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 a Rabbi Navai, yeah. we spoke about the wall, it's on the side of the, of the road, right? Oh, yesterday, Carmelite. No, that's no, Carmel- no, no. Oh, the hole. The, the hole. wall. Hole is in. It's 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 in a, inside the there wall. There is a wall, and there is and a hole inside. The, of and the, the wall, wall is in Rishut Abim. Exactly. The wall is in Rishut Abim. It's the border of the Rishut Abim. Okay. Now this way that people are um, passing next to this wall. Yeah. Is it normal? Normal, normal travel. Normal travel. Or is this is like see, normal see, travel? Normal see, travel. There, there. So normal this, travel. So this part will be different. Because remember, the Karmelit, when he said it was Good. attached to, beautiful. it was the Rishut HaRabim. Beautiful. 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 beautiful, beautiful. That was in the middle. So it's but see, Rishut HaRabim, Rishut exactly. HaRabim. It's a different type of oh, Karmelit. So says the Gemara. Good, beautiful, excellent. He doesn't call it the Karmelit. No, because he doesn't call it the Karmelit. The whole of the Karmelit, the Rishut HaRabim, he says, no, Rishut HaRabim. למה? תגיד לזה קרמלית, יוסף ישראל. בגלל שזה בדרך הליכה רגילה, אתה הולך... במקרה הראשון, בגלל שזה בין רשות אחת לשות הרבים. אז אולי אתם בזיגזגים. אה, אה, ביוטיפול. וזה צמוד לרשות היחיד, אומר זה קרמלית. אבל פה ברשות הרבים זה אולי... אם פיתה לוקה שם עכשיו שולחן עם חלות לשבת, מחוץ לחנות, זה היסוד. זה יכול קרמלית, כן. כי יש לי רשות... אבל יש לך רשות היחיד של פיתה לוקה. רשות הרבים זה הרחוב. אבל אם אני הולך עכשיו... אחורי באמצע הקירות, אולי זה רשות הרבים גם בצד, זה לא צמוד לרשות היחיד. כל זה זה... אוי, יש לך פה... שמת פה כוס על הזה, וזה צמוד לזה. אתה, מסלצי, אתה, מסלצי, אתה, מסלצי, אתה, מסלצי, אתה, מסלצי
No, you're saying. right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hatam. So Abayah says like this. Over there, meaning in the case. Hatam. Hatam. Why is it Why is the Carmelite example not Rishut Tarabim? So he says, Hatam, Abayus is back like this. Over there, in the case where we had the house was pulled in and there was that side area, Lonicha Tashmishte, we used the same language yesterday. It's not easy place to use, it's not a convenient location. In order to go there, you have to pull off the road and go back on the road. That's not considered then part of the Rishut Tarabim because it's not in the Derech Iluch, it's not the normal way of the... So that's Carmelit. Acha, but in this case of Chorei Rishut Tarabim, like I said, we have to use our imagination a little bit because we don't really use this, but Nichat Mishte. It's in the normal place for the Rishut Tarabim. It's a convenient thing to use. So therefore, it's part of Rishut Tarabim. So Abayi says, very simple. If it's something that's convenient and easy to use and it's in the Rishut Tarabim, it's Rishut Tarabim. In the case where there's this area that's off to the side and you have to go out of your way and go back to the street, that would not be considered Rishut Tarabim. That's considered Carmelit. Good. That's Abayi's answer. Mm. Let's continue. Also, 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 also. Yeah. A similar idea to what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were adding the Rishut Tayachid part of it, but we're not focusing in on that so much. We're focusing in, it's just off the side of the street. The Lo the, that's the, the point. The hole in the, the Rishut Arabim walls, exactly. it's easy to use, it's convenient. And the, the Carmelit, mm-hmm. this is a mamash to mm-hmm. hold the derech to use it. But that was saying zigzag. It's off the side. That's not convenient. So it can't be looked at like Rishut Tarabim Mamash. Therefore, it's Carmelit. The holes in the wall is considered more convenient to use. That's considered Rishut Tarabim. Okay. Now let's get complicated. Tanan. The Mishnah teaches us later on Taritet Amud Bet. It says like this. There's going to be another question on Abaye. Let's see. Bear with me on this question. The Mishnah says as follows. Hazorek Dalit Amot Bekotel. If somebody throws, he's standing in Rishut Tarabim. Okay. He's standing in Rishut Tarabim, and there's a wall in front of him that's also Rishut Tarabim. It's all Rishut, uh-huh. all Rishut Tarabim. Hazorek Dalit Amot Bekotel. So he picks something up. We'll see what this something is in a minute. And he throws four Amot at the wall. Lima'alami Yud. If the item lands above ten Tfachim, so we've already discussed this many times. Above ten Tfachim is not considered part of the Rishut Tarabim, and therefore, Kizorek Ba'avir. It's like he threw it in the air, meaning. It's makom petur, that's considered not part of the Rashut Tarabim, so he's patur. He didn't do akiran and hanacha in Rashut Tarabim. But limata miyot fachim, if it lands close ten fachim to the ground, below ten fachim, kizarek ba'aret, it's like he threw it on the ground and he's chayaf for akiran and hanacha with four amot of movement in Rashut Tarabim. Mm-hmm. That's the Mishnah. Vavin and Ba, in the Gemara, there asks, my kizorek ba'aretz. What does it mean that it's like he threw it in the ground when it's below ten tefachim? V'halo nach. The problem is it didn't rest. Meaning, what's the question? The Gemara was assuming. What's the case of the Mishnah? You picked up a rock or a ball. You throw it at the wall that's opposite you. What's going to happen? You throw it. If you pick a ball up, let's just take it's a good example. What's going to happen when you throw it against the wall? it bounces back, Mm -hmm. which means it's going to land within four amot. Because imagine the case over here. I'm standing and the wall is four amot away from me. Mm -hmm. You want to say five amot, you could be creative. If I throw it at that wall, what's going to happen is it's going to hit the wall and then bounce back. And where is it going to land? Within four amot, not after four amot. So the Gemara says, how can you say if it lands within ten tvachim to the ground, it. one second, how can you say if it lands within ten tvachim of the ground, your chayav, if it's going to bounce back, it's not going to settle. Who, who said it's going to bounce back to you? Well, that's what's... Oh, oh, so hold on. That's going to be what the Gemara answers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're right, you're right, you're right. But hold on. The assumption we're making here is if it's a ball or a chefetz or some sort of an item, it hits the wall, it bounces back, then it hasn't settled. It hasn't been nach, like we said, to be chayav. You need a nacha at four amot away from you. But if so you why are you chayav? To, to them, and it's going to fall back far away, more than four amot. If it comes you. back within four no, amot? Less than four amot. No, if it's more, more than four amot, you're chayav. chayav. But the point is, the case in the Mishnah here is there's how a wall. That? That's the, it's the assumption the Gemara is making. Hava Amina. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Hava oh, okay, Amina. Okay. It's going to bounce back, so it didn't so settle outside of four amot. That's the assumption we're making. No, if you really stand here and you throw something, exactly, you're going to bounce back. So why are you chayav? So the Gemara answers like, Yochai. Let's see it inside. 
Bam Rav Yochan, Rav Yochanan answers, Bidvelash me nashan. We're talking about a plump fig, and what you do is you throw it at the wall. It doesn't bounce back, it sticks to the wall. But listen to this. The, the Mishnah there needed, Rabbi Yochanan needed to explain the Mishnah there is talking about a case where you threw a fatty fig and it hit the wall, it's stuck. Okay, it's stuck to the wall. That's it. And since it's stuck, it was four amot away. It was akira and anachasa yur chayab. That's Rabbi Yochanan's chidush in that Mishnah. So it comes Rabbi to Abai and he says, but wait a second. L'shitatcha, that chorei reshut tarabim is considered reshut tarabim. L'shitatcha, according to Abai, you hold the holes in the wall of Rishut Tarabim is like Rishut Tarabim. So why didn't it just say the case? It's Chore Rishut Tarabim. Why do you have to come up with a chidush that the case of the Mishnah there is where you threw a fig and it stuck to the wall? Really, Rabbi Yochanan could have said it's where there was a hole in the wall and it went into the hole in the wall so it's not bouncing back. And then what could you say? Your Chayah, because that's like Rishut Tarabim. Let's read that inside and I'll explain it again. So says the Gemara, That Mishnah Tzaritet is talking about a fig and it's stuck to the wall. But says Rav to Abaye, But if like you hold, That the holes in the wall is like the Rishut Tarabim itself, Why does Rabbi Yochan need to say it's talking about a specific uh, fig that he threw and it stuck to the wall. Look, ma You can give an example of a rock or an object, some sort of a thing, and that who denach bechor and it landed in a hole. Just say that the Mishnah when it says your chayav if it's below ten tvachim is chayav. I it would bounce back. It's not going to bounce back. Why is it not going to bounce back? Because it landed in a hole and you hold abaye. That the hole is also considered Rishut Arabim. But, but you said the whole thing is that he hold it Rishut Arabim, the hole in the wall, because Nihaleda used it. It's, Correct. It's, in, it's not. Okay. Well, he, he didn't have an attention to have a use You know what, listen, thing. I'll give you an example. You have a football player. He's very good at throwing. So he's going to throw it in that hole. That was his Kavanah. You want to throw it at that hole. Okay, let's give an example. He throws it. So what Rav is saying to Abaya is, the fact that the Mishnah there does not, Rabbi Yochanan does not explain the Mishnah, it landed in a hole, implies it's mashma, that if it landed in the hole, you would not be chayav. Because it, Rabbi Yochanan gives this ukimta, he gives like a particular case which seems to be not necessarily in the words it's of the Mishnah. It's not going to bounce back. It's obvious. So he gives it a fatty fig. But if what you're saying is true, Abaye, that the holes of the Rashut Tarabim is like, so why not give an example? He threw it, it landed in a hole and it's not going to bounce back. But it doesn't give that example. Rabbi Yochanan does not say that's the Pshat which in the Mishnah, which is Mashma. The hole is not considered Rashut Tarabim. And that's why you have a kash on, on a bayah shita. It's not Rashut Tarabim, because if it was, that could have been the it, example. It is Rashut Tarabim. Why is it not going to be Rishut Arabim? Because, because it throw a fig, so it, it, it turns it to not Rishut Arabim. No, 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 yes, no, no, why don't you give the example? Why give example of Vela Shmena? Mm-hmm. Give the example, they throw any chafetz or mashu as a subject. It's not mashu. 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 It's שאתה לא הולד שהחורס ברשות הרבים, בהולד ברשות הרבים. אבל זה קשה. 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 אבל it turn, it does, why it's, go, it's going to turn into Carmelit, to a different shoot because it's, uh, it's stuck in, inside, in between something that is... Uh, no, 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 no. The wall is Rishut Tarabim. That's not a question here. The wall, it's standing in Rishut Tarabim. No. The question is, Rabbi Yochanan explains, when are you chayav in that Mishnah? It's where it's something stuck to the wall. As he says, because otherwise it would bounce back, so you wouldn't be chayav. But what happened if there is like a... Don't ask me what happened. Let's just focus, on, focus on the kasha. <laughs> just get the kasha. According to Abaye, though, if you, if you hold Abaye, that the holes in the wall of Rishut Tarabim is Rishut Tarabim also. So why is Rabbi Yochanan giving us this particular example? When are you chayav when it sticks? How does it stick? Because it's his uh, fig. It's a te'ina. Just give a different example. It could have been an example where there was a hole in the wall. He picked up a rock 
or anything for that matter, he threw it and it landed in that hole. And according to Abaye, that's Rishut Rabim in your Chayav. The fact that Rabbi Yochanan did not explain the Mishnah that way, that would imply you would not be Chayav in that case. Well, why wouldn't you be Chayav? Because Chore Rishut Rabim is not Rishut Rabim. So it's a Kash on Abaye. Uh, yeah, but it's not. It, it is Rishut Why, why, why? According to Abaye, it is. That's a Kasha. I'm that's saying a Kasha. Because, because, just because he gave me the, the fig, it, it's making it not Rishut Rabim. Because he gave the example of the fig, is mashma, he didn't give a different example. Whenever the Tanaim... But you can give a different example. Whenever the, you could give a different example, but Rabbi Yochanan and you are two different people. Whenever Tanaim or Amoraim speak, they're meduyak in their words. So we can make diukim, we can make implications yeah. based on what they say. He doesn't just stop giving an example. So if, if he's saying it's where it's a fig, he mashma... Exactly. 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 אז את כן חייב, אבל זה שהוא לא נתן את האקזמפל של הזה, זה אומר שהוא מזה, זה קרמלית, או מקום פצוע. מקום לעצמו, בקיצור, מקום לעצמו, בקיצור. אני בגובה שלו. לא, עזוב רגע, לפני גובה. איך, how did we call this shelf? חור, חורי רשות הרבה. לא, לא, אבל there was like a shelf that coming from the world. זיז, זיז. We'll get to that tomorrow, God willing. It might be a zיז. I'll get to that tomorrow. Whatever, but the point is, that's not given as the example. So let's see. So Shema, two answers. Mara gives two answers to answer this question for Abayah. It's hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's beauty, it's sweet. So let's continue. Two, two answers. Two answers for Abayah. Zim nen mishanila. No, 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 it's okay. Zim nen mishanila. <laughs> so sometimes they would answer this question as follows. So sometimes they would answer is, look, you couldn't give the example of a hole and then you threw it because even if there was a hole, if you threw a different item, it would also bounce back. So therefore, to give Bichlal an example of a chefet of some sort, it's likely that it would bounce back anyways and therefore, Rabbi Yochanan had to give an example that's more practical. What's a more practical example? That it's going to stick for sure. It's dvela uh, shmena. It's, it's, it's a fatty date. Because you talk about any chif, it's even if you're, you know, like you said, if you're aiming at the hole, it might hit and bounce back. So that's not a good example, but it's not a kash and abaya. He didn't give that example, not because he doesn't hold that's true. Really, if you would throw in the hole, you'd be chayav because it's for sure. He just didn't give that example because it's not practical in this case. That's one way they used to answer. And Zimnin Mishanila, the second way they used to answer was, Bekoto delet bechor. The Mishnah is talking about a wall that doesn't have holes in it. Meaning, when the Mishnah there says, if you throw it at the wall and it sticks to the wall, or your chayav, if it's less than 10 tvachim, it's, not, it's a wall without holes. So therefore, it can't say it went into the hole because there's no holes in the wall. So, so he no, had to give an example of te'ina. That's no the point. That it doesn't hold and therefore, there's no kasha and abaye. What the Gemara is about to do is to show us we could prove from that Mishnah itself that it's talking about a wall without holes. So it supports this answer. I'll prove it to you from the beginning. So it is Rishut Arabim. So it is. Because really, Chorei Rishut Arabim is Rishut Arabim. He didn't discuss. Exactly. He didn't discuss it though. Yeah. Exactly. קודם כל, כל העניין של החפץ זה בתוך חוזה, וחוץ מזה אולי זה קשור לבחר חורים. אבל הגבלה שמנה, זה כמו שאתה, it's like you want to throw something sticky. Sticky, exactly. And it's going to stick anyway with the hole, without the hole. Exactly, it doesn't make a difference, exactly. So that's what we're not talking about. The second answer we just said is, we're not talking about a wall with holes, and therefore you can't say, have a minute like that. So the Gemara says, how do we know that Mishnah, Ansari Tet, is talking about a wall without holes? So we're going to prove it from that Mishnah. We'll show. From the context of that Mishnah, it's clear we're talking about a wall without, without holes in it. So it proves like a bayit. Midikatani reisha, because the beginning of that Mishnah talk, which we read, Sarak lemaala miyut fachim, if he threw it above ten fachim at the wall, kizorek ba'avir. It's like he threw it in the air, it's like a makom petur, and you're not going to be chayav. That was the beginning of the Mishnah. Now, let's analyze this for a second. If it enters your mind that it's a wall with hole, amayk is zorek ba'avir. Why is it considered zorek ba'avir? Now listen to this good. The walls of Rishut Abim usually were four tfachim wide. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what the Gemara is going to say is like this. If we're talking about a wall that has holes in it, when you throw it and it lands in a hole, let's say it lands above ten tfachim. It lands in a hole, now that hole is above ten tfachim, 
And above ten fachim is not makom. Above ten fachim wouldn't necessarily be considered makom petur if it's four fachim by four fachim. Ah, what would that be considered? That's a reshut hayachid. So says the Gemara. The fact that that's not considered falling into reshut hayachid must be there's no holes in the wall. Because if there was holes in the wall and it's above ten fachim and it's four by four fachim wide. That would be Rashut Tayachid. It must be that whole Mishnah is not talking about where there's holes. And therefore, you could say in the Seifa of the Mishnah also, the reason we use the example of a uh, fig is because there's no hole, so you can't talk about that's that. That's the proof but that it's not, that's, talking that it's not about talking about, about holes. Exactly. Let's so read that inside. Holes? One so second. Hold, holes and holes we have here. Things we don't have. That's the point. That's why it's not a kasha We have wall without hole. Let's see that inside. Now, if you think it's talking about a wall with holes, Amai Kizorek Ba'avir, Hanach Bechor. It landed in the hole. That's considered a Rishut Tayachid. Now, maybe you'll answer me and say, it's not a proof. Why is it not a proof? Maybe really it has holes. But the air, the area of that hole on top above ten Tfachim is not four by four. Since it's not four by four, it's not a Rishut Tayachid. Now, I'm going to tell you a big Chidush right now, which we're about to say, and then we'll see it inside. Well, if it's not four by four, if it's not four by four, it's not a rishut tayachid. So maybe the re- really it's time where there are holes in the wall. The reason your patur when it lands in that hole on top above ten tfachim is because it doesn't have the area to be considered rishut tayachid because it's not four by four. So what the Gemara is going to say is that's not true. Fascinating chedush here. We're going to say. I'm going to explain this with a picture here because the picture is very nice. We're going to prove. Just listen to what we're going to prove, and then I'll prove it to you. We're going to prove. That Rabbi Meir's opinion and Stam Mishnah Rabbi Meir, which means Rabbi Meir's opinion and a regular Mishnah without an author is Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir's opinion is if you have a hole or some sort of a opening, even if it's not the sufficient size, it's not for whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. if we could imagine that it could be carved out to that size, it already takes on the status of that item. Now, I'm going to explain to you here, and then I'll explain to you what the proof is. is Rabbi Meir's opinion is, let me just explain how it applies here, and then I'll explain it over there. It's really a Masechet Yoma. Just get it here for a second. Rabbi Meir is going to hold. Even if the hole was very small, but it was above 10 Tfachim, since the width of the wall of Rashid Tarabim is four, four Tfachim wide, theoretically, if you would carve it out, it would be for Tfachim. Mm. And that would be Rishut Tayachid. Mm. Wow. So therefore, it is a potential. it's a potential to be Rishut Tayachid, we would already look at it as Rishut Tayachid. Elama, it must be that we're not talking about where there's holes at all. Because if there was even a small hole, it would already be looked at as Rishut Tayachid. So this supports the second answer. Now where do we find, this is the Shita Vermeer, this is a fascinating thing. In Hilchot Mezuzah, very interesting thing. Which type of a door opening is chayav and mezuzah? So there's, the halacha is, it has to be 10 tfachim tall and at least 4 tfachim wide. That's not that big, by the way. That's pretty no, short. No, no. To be chayav and mezuzah. Okay? Now look at this example. This is a fascinating example. If you want to look at the art school, you can look at it over there. The example is, look at the picture. You have an opening that is 10 tfachim tall and four tfachim wide at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But as it goes up, it becomes more narrow, because it it, it turns, Mm -hmm. curves, and at the top of it, it's not four tfachim wide. So is this opening chayav or patur in mezuzah? Obviously chayav, because the Why do you say obviously chayav? It needs to be four tfachim wide to be chayav in mezuzah. Because the wideness starts from the, after ten tfachim. It's become narrow. Uh, above ten tfachim. No, oh, look shalosh. at the example. The whole thing is ten tfachim tall. From floor to ceiling, it's only ten tfachim. Mm. Only ten tfachim. So up to and, ten tfachim. And towards the roof, towards the top of it, it rounds off. So it's not four by four tfachim there. It's not four tfachim wide. The same idea of the, 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 the wall of the, potential the, to be the base is four. Enough. But to be chayav and mezuzah, it has to be ten tfachim tall and four tfachim wide. Here, it's not... Ten tfachim tall, four tfachim wide throughout the entirety of it. Yes, but they have the, key, the wall of the potential. So this is a machloket, fascinating machloket. Rabbi Meir says, we look at it as if it was squared. 
even though it's not, since you could take a hammer and knock the corners and it would be ten tvachim wide, it's chayav and mezuzah. The chachamim say that's, we don't look at it that way. Well, this is know. not going to, because it's an imaginary halacha. So, so maybe there's yeah. something... But so one second, one second, one second, let me just finish up. So it says, it says the Gemara like this. Rabbi Meir's, the chacham say no. We say, look, at the top of it, it's not four tvachim wide, so it's not chayav and mezuzah. Says the Gemara, we know stam mishnah Rabbi Meir. Whenever you have a mishnah without a tana, Without a name, we assume it's Rabbi Meir. Mm -hmm. So therefore, says the Gemara, it can't be that the Mishnah is where it's a, a, it landed in a hole on the top of the wall. Because, you see because if it did, even if it wasn't four by four Tvachim, Tachlis, we would imagine that it was carved out and that would be a Rishut Teichir and you'd be Chayav if it lands above ten Tvachim. The fact that it says your Patur above ten Tvachim must be, like Rabbi Meir, must be that there's no holes in the wall and that's why Rabbi Yochanan said it's where you threw a, a date and it's stuck and, it, and it's not a Kash on a bite. Let's read that inside, Chev. Says the Gemara. Maybe you'll say the reason you wouldn't be chayav in our Mishnah is because it wasn't four by four tfachim. Therefore, it's not a rishut tayachid. The problem is, if somebody picked up an item in rishut tarabim and he threw it at the wall and it landed above ten tfachim, and it landed in a hole above ten tfachim in the wall, even a small hole. This is a machlok at Rabbi Meir and the Rabbanan. To Rabbi Meir, Savar, this is the word. What does chokikin lahashlim mean? We imagine, you don't actually carve it out, we imagine that it's carved out to completion. Meaning, in the case of the mezuzah, we imagine that it's squared off. And in the case over here, we imagine that it's four by four tvachim and it's rashut tayachir. Rabbanan savri en chokikin lashlim. And the Rabbanan say, no, we don't look at it that way. And therefore, says Rashi, since Dam Mishnah Rabbi Meir, if there was a hole that it landed in, you'd be chayav. Elalav, it must be, Shma mina bekotel delet pechor. And we're talking about a case where there's no hole in the wall. And Shema Mina, that's why Rabbi Yochanan gave an example where you threw the fatty fig instead of an example of Chor. But really, like Abaye said, it could be Chorei Rishut Tarabim is Kirshut Tarabim. That wasn't the case we were talking about. Okay, we're going to stop here at the two dots. We'll pick up tomorrow. We'll pick up the Chetun tomorrow. Yes, yes, you're right. There are many halachot that we talk about that need to use imagination. Okay, so this is an imaginary wall. Is this imaginary wall? Wallet that can carve also. 100. So that so that's exactly right, and that's why there's no. Right. You have to have mekol. You need a source for such a thing. You have to have a source. That's why you mekol. You like Rabbi Meir? Yeah, I think. No, Ani Omer, Kilo, you you think that makes more sense to you that she? No, because that's a big chiddush to say that. No, no, no. Chokekin laashlim. No, but the whole of the whole of the Sfaradi is not about Rabbi Meir. I'm just saying, it's a big chiddush to say such a thing. You know, when we were kids, when we were little, I'm not joking. I'm telling you weird stuff. There was many kids in the house, grandchild, and it was and it was pretty much wild, you know. No going. We call it the HDD, whatever we call it. And we all went so wild, and all of a sudden, it hit, boom! A head stick to a wall. Or the, <laughs> you know what's the word the grandma and the mother said? Bimir, the Bishimon. Interesting. They called the mama. They, they, it's, because the Sfaradim was very into learning Mishnayot and Zohar. That's beautiful. Sfaradim didn't learn too much Gemara. Mm -hmm. Mishnayot. Amazing. And they go into them, they talk to them. Rashbi. Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Meir. Mama is Korotlo. I'm not joking. And then the child is okay. I don't know how we survived. It was so wide and like. And we both said, I'm telling you. They touched them, Zuzah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.